The standard information block is the first attribute that is written to the master file table record. It begins with an attribute header which is 24 bytes in length. The first four bytes of the standard information attribute header consist of the signature which is 10 0 0 0 0 0 0. The next four bytes refer to the length of the entire attribute block including the header. This is 60 hex or 96 decimal. This means that the entire standard information attribute block is 96 bytes in length. Byte 9 of the standard information attribute header is a non-resident flag. This field refers to the body of the standard information block itself and whether it is resident or non-resident. If this flag was set to 0, 1, it would mean that the data in the body of the attribute would be non-resident. It would be stored outside of the master file table record. The flag value that you see is currently set to 0, 0, which means that it is resident. So the body of the standard information block is resident and found within this record. The next byte indicates the length of the allocated name of this attribute. This value is set to zero because the attribute has not been allocated a name. It goes by the default of standard information. The next two bytes refer to the name offset field. According to forensic references, this field was meant to indicate the start of the attribute proper. The fact that it is set to zero means that this field is not used by NTFS. Bytes 13 and 14 of the attribute header represent status flags. Even though these status flags are included with all of the record's attributes, according to forensic references, this status flag only applies to the data attribute, which is in the last block of the record. The available status flags for this field are 00, which means normal, 0100, which means compressed, 40.00 for encrypted, and 80.00 for sparse. This attribute status is set to 0, 0, 0, 0, so it is normal. Bytes 15 and 16 are listed as being the attribute ID. However, the available forensic references are unclear and somewhat contradictory as far as the purpose this field serves. One reference suggests that this field is an identifier that is unique to the record. Other than in unusual circumstances, this field will be populated with 0000. zero, zero, zero. Bytes 17 through 20 are the length of the standard information attribute block minus the attribute header. The value of the field in this case is hex 48, which converts to decimal 72. So the size of the standard information attribute by itself is 72 bytes without the header. Bytes 21 and 22 represent the offset to the standard information attribute data. This is the number of bytes from the beginning of the header to the beginning of the attribute data itself. This field reads 18 in hex, which is 24 in decimal. So there are 24 bytes from the beginning of the header to the beginning of the attribute data. Byte 23 is listed as an indexed flag, but remains at a value of 0. Likewise, byte 24 is listed as padding, so it will also remain at 0. That concludes the header of the standard information attribute block. The attribute proper of the standard information block begins with four time and date stamps. Each of these time date stamps is made up of 8 bytes. The first of these time date stamps is the file created time stamp. The second time stamp is the file modified time stamp. The third is the record changed time stamp. The last time stamp is the last accessed time. I want to spend a moment and talk about the importance of these timestamp values. Whenever you extract any time and date value from a piece of evidence, 
you have to verify that the time zone offset is calibrated with that of the tool you're using. If you use the automated extraction function of a forensic tool, it is very possible that it will not adjust the local settings from UTC, or Coordinated Universal Time, or Greenwich Mean Time. What this means specifically is, when you convert a value from hex into a time value, you have to select the proper time offset. For our time zone, Eastern Daylight Time, this would be GMT-4 or UTC-4. If the correct time offset is not implemented, then all of your evidence will be skewed. As an example of this skewed evidence, take a look at the disk editor template. You'll notice the timestamps are displayed as UTC only. There's no offset currently. The time and date for the file created stamp is February 5, 2015, 11.52 a.m according to the extracted data template on the left of your screen. I am now going to manually extract and convert the file created timestamp from the standard information block using a tool called decode. All I have to do is copy the 8 byte value from the record and paste it into decode. The tool will interpret the 8 bytes as little Indian and will execute the conversion. Notice the Add Bias field at the top drop-down of the tool. It has been set to UTC-4, which is Eastern Daylight Time for people on the East Coast of the U.S. I will now decode the value. You will notice that there is a difference in times between what the tool decoded and what is displayed by the disk editor. There is a difference of four hours because the disk editor didn't account for the difference in time zones. This is serious when it comes to collecting evidence because there have been numerous documented cases where the evidence has been thrown out because of mistakes made in collecting evidence where time differentials have been concerned. Following the four time date stamps in the standard information attribute is the file permissions field. There are 13 available descriptors for this field. 0001 is read only. 0002 is hidden. 0004 is system. 0020 is archive. 0040 is device. 0080 is normal, 0100 is temporary, 0200 is sparse file, 0400 is reparse point, 0800 means compressed, 1000 means offline, 2000 is no content indexed, and 4000 means encrypted. The field in this record is 0020, so it is an archive file. Following the file permissions field is a 4-byte value called maximum number of versions. This is the maximum allowed versions for a file. Zeros mean that version numbering has been disabled. The next field is version number. This field will be zeros if the maximum number of versions has been set to zero. The next four bytes is called the class ID. The purpose of this field is not well defined by the developers of NTFS. These four bytes will most likely always be set to zeros. The four bytes that follow the class ID are the owner ID. This field is directly linked with one of the system reserved journaling files that is part of NTFS called quota with a dollar sign in front of it. Since this field has been set to zeros, the quota file has been disabled. The next four bytes are the security ID. The security ID field is associated with the NTFS system reserve journaling file called dollar sign secure. The value in this field, hex 0AAF, 
or 2735 decimal, is a log entry identification number. The 8 bytes which follow the security ID field make up the quota charged field. This field is associated with the dollar sign quota system reserved file. Since all the bytes are set to zero, the quota journaling file has been disabled. The last 8 bytes of the standard information attribute block make up the update sequence number. After reading the Microsoft developer references, this is not related to the update sequence number that is used in the master file table error checking. This field is associated with the NTFS system reserved file dollar sign USN journal. The value in this field is a log entry number. The entry number value in this case is hex 013A A9 CB50 or 52791734567. This is a complete breakdown of the standard information attribute. As a side note, a number of these fields are unused, always set to zero or refer to system controlled log files. Even if you do not extract much information of forensic value from a number of these fields, it is still good to know what they are used for for the sake of reference. The file name attribute block begins with its signature of 30, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. What follows is an attribute header just like the one which followed the standard information attribute block. Aside from a few notable changes, a number of fields in the file name attribute header will be the same as those in the previous attribute header. I will now mark those differences. The attribute length field which follows the attribute signature is 78 hex or 120 decimal. This means that the entire file name attribute block is 120 bytes in length. The non-resident flag, name length, and name offset fields are all set to zeros as they were previously. The attribute ID field for the file name header is set to 03. It is still unclear according to the available references as to what purpose this ID serves. The previous ID was set to 00. zero. The attribute length field minus the header for this block is hex 5a or 90 decimal. The only other difference is the indexed flag is set to 01. There's no available documentation which describes what this value is for, but for this master file table record, this attribute block has the flag set to 01. Bytes 25 through 30 of the file name attribute proper make up the parent directory file record number. This represents the master file table record number of the folder from which this file originated. A total of 6 bytes makes up this field. The value in hex for this field is 047F21 or 294,689 in decimal. The next two bytes make up the parent directory sequence number. This would be the sequence number for the folder from which this record's file originated. Remember from the breakdown of the file record header that the sequence number is the number of times that a master file table record has been accessed and released. The sequence number for the parent folder is 88 hex or 136 decimal. The next 32 bytes represent four 8-byte time date stamps. These are duplicates of the time stamps that were created in the standard information attribute block that are represented here as well in the subsequent file name attribute entry. Following the four duplicate time date stamps, there are two fields consisting of 8 bytes each. The first field is the allocated size of the file associated with this master file table record. The second field is the physical size of the record. After consulting multiple online references and then Brian Carrier's file system forensics text, these two fields are ordinarily set to zeros. 
The allocated and physical size fields are defined within the data attribute block at the bottom of the record. When these two fields appear as non-zero values in any other attribute aside from the data attribute, they are usually incorrect. There is no real explanation for this. This is probably a coding oversight on the part of the developers who maintain the NTFS code at Microsoft. Following the allocated and physical file size fields is the file attributes field. This field is 4 bytes in size and is the exact same information as the file permissions field from the standard information attribute. The only difference between the file permissions and the file attributes field is that the latter has two additional flags. These additional flags are directory and index view, attributes that are usually associated with folders. The file attributes field for this record is set to hex 20, which is archive, the same as previously stated in standard information. The four bytes which follow the file attributes field are used for documenting space requirements for extended attributes. If any attributes require additional space in excess of what is allocated to them, the buffer space required is denoted in this field. This field will be set to all zeros unless there are extended attributes. At offset 88 of the file name attribute block is the file name length field which takes up one byte. This is the length in characters which makes up the file name. The value of this field currently is 0c hex which is 12 in decimal. So there are 12 characters in this file name. Located at offset 89 of the attribute is the file name namespace field. A namespace is an available set of characters within a particular group. Some namespaces have more available characters than others. By default, NTFS has four namespaces available. These are POSIX, represented by a 0, WIN32, represented by a 1, DOS, represented by a 2, and WIN32 and DOS, designated by a 3. This field is set to a value of 0, 02, so it has a DOS namespace. The last field in the file name attribute block is the file name text consisting of characters. You can usually see what the file name is by looking at the ASCII and Unicode columns. In this particular case, this is the 12 letter name of a file that ends in .txt. Some master file table records will have more than one file name attribute entry like this record does. Usually it is because one entry is a short file name and the other is a long file name. Many of the fields within the second file name attribute will be the same as its predecessor. For the sake of reference, I will briefly mention the duplicate fields again for this attribute entry. I will give further detail on the fields which differ from the prior attribute entry. After the 4-byte opening signature, the remaining portions of the attribute header are the same as the previous file name attribute, with the exception of the attribute length values, both with and without the header. The attribute length, including the header, is represented by a value of hex 80, which is 128 in decimal. The attribute length without the header is represented by hex 66, which is 102 in decimal. In the attribute proper, the parent directory record numbers, time date stamps, allocated and real file sizes, file attributes, and extended attributes fields will all remain just as they were in the previous file name entry. The only significant difference between this attribute entry and the previous one are the last three fields. The file name length field value for this entry is a hex 12, which is 18 in decimal. This is longer than the file name from the previous attribute. Usually, if there is more than one file name entry, one is a short file name and the other is a long file name. The second to last field in this attribute is the namespace field. 
Remember from the last entry that there are four possible values for this field. The previous file name entry had a namespace value of 0, 02, which means that it was a DOS namespace. This namespace value is a hex 0, 01, which means that it has a POSIX namespace. I am not going to go into detail in all of the different namespaces, but just for the sake of reference, the POSIX namespace has the largest number of characters available to it. The field that takes up the remainder of the attribute entry is the file name itself. As before, you can see the characters in clear text in ASCII and Unicode to the right of the hexadecimal values. This is the end of the standard information and file name attribute entries for this record. In video 3 of this series, I will do a complete breakdown of the final attribute entry in this record, which is the data attribute. This attribute is significantly more complicated, which is why I am saving it for its own video. This is where a file's cluster addresses and memory are located. In the next video, I will demonstrate how to decode the values to get the address locations. This concludes part two of the video series.